What's up, y'all? Um, on this episode, uh, what's up, Square Pin Brigade? On this episode, we have TikTok and and uh, extraordinaire Jace, the pickup scientist. He actually the dude who did the video with Pete Davidson about how I taught Pete Davidson game. Um, we talk about analyzing self value, Michael B. Jordan's breakup, Kevin Samuel legacy, and uh, the Me Too movement. Um, this is a really yeah. dope concept, it, and the, the Patreon is dope as shit. That's Don't forget right. the one on one consultations. Harry, talk to me. Yeah, I mean, it was a great episode with Jace, and uh, we continue. We actually do a bonus episode with him over at patreon.com slash manschool202 that's where we do all our bonus content you get listener mail there we get uh, bonus episodes all of that and it helps keep the show going uh in this bonus episode we talked to jace uh about uh the, the pickup game a little bit more uh pete davidson we go into that some more also uh we name some names that or we only name on patreon so you have to pay to find out who uh didn't pay dante the proper respect in my opinion and uh, if monogamy is possible. So all of that over at patreon.com slash manschool202. Plus, uh, at Dante's urging, I am now doing uh, consultations myself. So if you want any relationship or sex advice, you can email me at uh, advicefromharry at gmail.com, advicefromharry at gmail.com to set up a consultation. Uh, that's it for the plugs. Enjoy the show. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Better man. Put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 what up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The Sexual Revolution is being podcasted, and I am truly excited. Um, This is a special show. Now, I know I've said that 500 times before, <laughs> but this time I mean it. Um, and uh, but before we get to that, Harry, what's going on? You ready to rock and roll? I'm absolutely ready to rock and roll. It's a, it's a big things okay. going down. Big uh, things. Big things. Big things big in the things. building. Uh, I don't want to get into specific. Let's just say the things are big. Big. That's all you all need right. to know. That's all big everybody things, needs to know. Big things big are going. Things, all right, fair big enough. Things going down. <laughs> so, um, so our guest today, um, the internet is. I'm gonna say the internet. I'm gonna sound like an old dude. The internet is so vast and so wide, right? Um, I, I I got this message from a, one of my fans sent me a video um, that uh, from this next young man who uh, I'm gonna introduce him in a second, but it was, we'll get into that. But um, also a consummate professional at this pick up game relationships and the social dynamics of men and women. Um, Give it up for Jace, the pickup scientist, y'all. Give it up for Jace, y'all. Um, so, Yo. Jace, uh, hey. it's good to have you on. Um, good to be how here. Did good you, to be here. Uh, it, it's it's dope to have you. Wanted to have you on because of the fact you you did a video. Um, was kind of an advertisement for your own for your own thing. But if you just want to discuss the video and how you got to that, and and you know how you found us or whatever, you know? Right. Um, first of all, I just want to say big, big thank you for this opportunity. I'm a huge fan of you, Dante. Uh, so basically, Appreciate I've always that, known about um, you for years now. I've been following your stuff for a long time. You are one of the few real ones left, man. And, yeah. you know, you and Patrice O'Neill God rest his soul. You guys like yeah. tore up the streets back in the day, man. So yeah, I've always absolutely. been a huge fan of that. Absolutely. And I've always known for the longest that you were uh, Pete Davidson's mentor. And I right. just kind of kept that piece of information in my back pocket all this time. Like, OK, right. this is why Pete Davidson can do what he does. Obviously, right. he has like some serious macking going on. He's <laughs> doing his thing in Hollywood over there, you know? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just came down to I needed some attention to my YouTube and I figured I killed two birds with one stone. I would uh, get some attention to my YouTube and then at the same time give you the props you deserve because it's kind of unfortunate how uh, things turn out sometimes. People don't get the credit they deserve. Pete Absolutely. Davidson is doing his thing, as yeah. I said before, but no one even knows where he got those superpowers from. Right, and right, right. Hopefully, I help to like get people in the right direction. Let, let them know, like, hey, there's this amazing guy. His name is Dante Nero, and he is a king at this. And he trained Pete Davidson ever since he was 16. People need right. to know that. 
people so here, here's an interesting i saw the video first of all let me say kudos to the video because the video like uh, this so so i'm still you know i'm 55 years old i'm still trying to kind of master this geography the geography of youtube and and, right, and right. TikTok and all these things and so you know and as much as as much as if you haven't it's, it's sort of like if you play madden and you've never played mm. madden before and now you playing what what are they up to now madden 20 something or yeah. whatever i, I don't know it's just the season but, yeah yeah but if you don't if you've never played madden you can't you you can't go from atari 1600 to playing madden yeah. it's just it, right, it's so right. layered and mm. and so a lot of young dudes who, who you know have kind of came up or came up listening to the stuff that Patrice and I was talking to, and then ultimately the stuff because well, a lot of people don't understand that the you know when we did we did the Black Philip show the Black Philip show was only thirteen episodes it was only right. we and we did it thirteen episodes in the context of of two years so it was from 2006 to 2008 it was mm. only 13 episodes so it wasn't a lot of content i mean especially when you think about you know uh social media and the, the, what a content monster it is now and how it's just chewing up content and, and and changing the whole geography and so we were talking about that stuff and i've and i've still get guys who have listened to black philip and they come to me and one of the things that i tell them all the time is like stop watching black philip and the reason why, <laughs> because as much as as much as it, it was a there was an authenticity and a and our it was out, but we were at a time when we were trying to figure this thing out. You know, mm. we knew that there was that there was a whole uh, social shift, and we were kind of. I mean, I wasn't angry, but Patrice was angry about it and, yeah. and the kind of the observations. Yeah. And and I wasn't angry because I was always getting I was always getting laid. And whereas Patrice yeah. was a big dude. Kind of, yeah. you know he was you know wasn't a, was kind of a fat dude and so these yeah. things that we normally didn't think have are, game uh, at the time when right, he was yeah, right. when he grew he, up yeah when he was younger yeah God I'm sorry Harry I didn't mean to no, no I'm saying far. he just didn't he was a type of guy who didn't have game until later yeah, on in and his he, life right. and he said he was a relationship a serial relationship guy too mm. so I'm I'm not saying anything mm. but what happened was we were trying to figure it out and he was from his perspective where I was stripping and pimping and and so, mm. so it was like you know I was in the I was in the mix already so naturally my you know there was I just had so much more opportunities and stuff and so I just didn't have that I just didn't have it. and I also was walking around with the, the superficial stuff with the six pack and the you know <laughs> I was light skinned in the 80s All and the right. 90s but it was like you know <laughs> so it was just like a whole um and so one of the things I tell people not not to listen if you can't listen to Black Phillip for entertainment purposes I because it cre it 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 builds anger and mm. one of the things you can't do is you can't you, anger is not you can never live get let anger an opt a seat at the table um and and Very a lot true. of the philo a lot of the philosophies that i expound in in relationships and stuff like that is stuff that ultimately just doesn't it just I, I'm, i've learned that the philosophies just don't stand true for relationships and women and getting women but it also stands true in life so mm. if you're a boxer and you go into a fight angry Chances are you're gonna get knocked you're out. You're gonna get caught. You, the, yeah. The, the clarity, you lose the clarity. And one of the mm. things I talk about is that anytime you let emotion at us at the seat at the table, um, what you're doing is you, you get into fear and anxiety and emotion cuts mm. your your knowledge down to I would say a third, a quarter to a third. So no matter how great, you know, I mean, I know you you're doing your thing and and right. but the minute you are emotional in a situation you can count on the fact that you can whatever you think you know you know cut that down to a, to a quarter a third or a quarter because now gotcha. you're not making you're not observing all the all the all the nuance that you would normally be able to observe if you're if you're not angry so yeah. if you can talk to me a little bit about how you know what was your How'd you get into this? What was your upbringing? What was the thing? How you got into this whole game? 
Okay, so this starts all the way back uh, where I was born and raised, which is Lagos, Nigeria. Okay. And uh, shout out Las Giri, shout out Niger. <laughs> um, I moved to the States about seven years ago now, so just before I turned 20. Right. And back at home is where I got my, my introduction to like the world of uh, persuasion and the mm -hmm. art of like conversational hypnosis, neuro-linguistic programming, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Pickup was just the natural next step in my evolution. It was right. like, use it for like sales, use it for marketing. Sure. At some point, as a young man, you're going to try to figure out how to get girls with it. And that was just a natural next step. I, I just went in. I was fascinated with the world. I was completely consumed by it. And by the time I got to America, I'd already like been practicing back at home. And I'd gotten a little bit of a rep for myself back at home. And mm -hmm. then I came to America. And the funniest thing happened. I went through a very massive culture shift, a culture shock, yeah. but at the same time, I went into like a dip in low self-esteem. You know what I mean? Okay. Let me tell you why. Back at home, what I am from like an aesthetic and social uh, value level is not as uh, appealing, let's just say. Like just and as an example, just to pick something out. I'm not saying this is the entirety of the game. I'm just saying I got you. But, you know, use. let's escalate um, the make these generalizations so right, we can escalate right. the dialogue. <laughs> true, ahead. true. So back at home, I'm just like every other guy from an aesthetic point of view. I'm just right. another dark skinned dude. Being dark skinned is not special back where I'm from because everyone's dark skinned. Having right. a six pack is not special where I'm from because mm -hmm. everyone has one out of just pure poverty anyway. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I, I would always joke that I was like a solid eight on a good mm -hmm. day, but mostly a seven or a six as a man, right? This is right. how I felt about myself. So, when I came to America, finding out that who I was was a little higher in social value, it messed right. with my mind. And you would think that would give me a, a massive boost in my confidence and self esteem. No, it kind of made me a little depressed because I realized man, things are a little easier than I thought they would be. And I kind of like decided to go into this self-reflection uh, period in my life where I just went, okay, let me try to learn a game from scratch since I'm in a new place. And yeah, I went through, I call it my chubby chick phase. I, I just, I didn't have the self-belief to go for the kind of women I really wanted. So right. I was suffering a lot because of it. Eventually, I began to figure things out brick by brick, layer by layer. Okay, Until, let me you know, let me let me ask you a question. So mm -hmm. you you got more you were you were more desirable here, and it yeah. and it messed you up self esteem wise. Can you mm -hmm. kind of explain how what the dynamic is because it seems so counter counter it's counterintuitive. Counterintuitive, very right. true. So the entire point to that is, imagine you've gone your entire life being lied to. You know, it's kind of like what we were talking about, the whole uh, being a, a, a guy that's angry, a guy yeah. that's raging all the time. A mm -hmm. lot of that anger for a lot of men, from what I've noticed, it comes from just the feeling of being lied to their entire lives up until the point where they were told the truth. And the truth, as freeing as it is, is also really damning because it makes you realize you've wasted a lot of time doing the wrong thing. You know what I mean? That's okay. how it felt for me when I came here. It was like I had deceived myself into thinking I wasn't an attractive man only to find out all I needed was like a simple location change. That's why I, I feel very connected on like a spiritual level to Patrice O'Neill because he had mm -hmm. the exact same type of realization going to Brazil. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? America right. was my Brazil pretty right. much. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, so, so that was the revelation. But once you have the revelation, you so so oh, so you're saying it, you were angry in the mm. fact that because of wow, that that's a, that's a kind of interesting because it, to me, even to me, it's like um, so my I, and maybe it was it might because I your, also it might fuck with your sense of a uh, of of reality as as mm -hmm. yes. your perspective. Mm. Like you can't trust anything anymore in a weird exactly. way. Exactly. That, yeah. That's literally what it was. It yeah. was like, what do I trust now? What is real? What, what isn't real? What, is what, real, what, what is feelings of like, mine are valid? What exactly. is bullshit? What's the system? Yeah. This entire time, I thought I would end up with uh, some four somewhere. I thought that was the best I could do. And maybe mm -hmm. if I worked hard enough, I would get like a five or a six. And it turns out I can get tens this entire right. time. 
It's right, like right, right. I, I, I was defeating myself mentally, and that made me get even harder on myself, you know? Now, did you get tens in Africa? Um, to be completely honest, no. I, I no. got as high as like a, an eight or a nine, maybe, but not tens, no. Okay, so here's the, here's the thing is just ultimately, and I say this all the time. I mean, I'm 55 years old, and I'm pro- mm. right now, I'm probably in the absolute worst shape that I've ever been in my life. <laughs> right. And one of the things that, 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 uh, you know, the motivation of, you know, if I had the motivation of like, oh, you can't get girls because you got to lose weight, right? Mm, I mm. probably would have been a little more motivated, but it's almost like, yo, stop fucking me. So I can, <laughs> if y'all would please. <laughs> I, I completely understand that. Right. It's like, because at, almost... at some point it's about your, your own. It really has to be about your personal growth. But yeah. if it's not your per, if you're not getting laid because you fat, you go, I, I better lose weight. You know what I mean? It's true, a clear, true. direct. So, so I actually you know, I have a friend like that that's suffering from that kind of success. The dude is like hitting 250, 260 pounds. Mm-hmm. But every time he goes to the gym, he relapses because he gets so much validation from women. It it, it almost feels yeah. unnecessary to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I completely understand that. Yeah. So it's, it's, but, but the deeper, the deep, so it's, it's funny because I look at you now as a young dude and I remember when I was where you are now and, and I was fascinated about the neurolinguistics program and the body language right, and all of that right. stuff. And then, and now all of that stuff becomes so natural, but it becomes, mm. it comes natural because of there's a level of authenticity. So what I'm, it's sort of like you got your black belt. And I'm mm. and I'm kind of like the grandmaster who's trying to do the dim mag death touch, like right. like the, I'm the eighth be... degree black belt or something. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. So it's like I'm starting to realize that. Uh, and what's what's funny is now is what's interesting is, you know, Harry's been around me for years. You know, we've been doing this for years, but we knew each other before that. And it's weird because Harry's just decided i mean we're talking about two, the last two weeks yeah harry was like i i want to do consultations and i was like yeah well uh, okay mm-hmm. i was kind of wondering when you but it, it just gets to the point where he feels even comfortable enough yeah you know because he had limited not, himself you're not done learning i mean i'm still not done learning you you can sure. always keep learning but it's 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 weird you reach a point like i don't know it's it's a big responsibility to give mm. that information mm. and I want to do it credibly because there's a lot of people out there giving a lot of frivolous information out there frivolous. running buck wild. Absolutely. Mm. Just yeah. running wild. And some of them are on mm. TikTok and some of them are on YouTube and and mm. you get the views, but it doesn't mean it's the right information. It's it's dangerous, you know. Okay. You know what? While you're on that, let me go ahead sure. and ask you guys a question about sure. that specifically. Because it kind of ties into that same thing about just men in general feeling uh, a dissatisfaction and a frustration with women and getting angry about it. Mm-hmm. I can tell you just as a guy that's been on TikTok for a little bit now, I want to say a, a solid two or three months I've taken it seriously. What sells on there is that anger. Yeah. Like speaking yeah. completely honestly, it's not the healthiest thing to do. It's not the mm. healthiest way to go about teaching game, but I've come to find the biggest uh, pages in my industry on TikTok are definitely the guys that are just pushing the, you know, uh, women are this, women are that. Uh, yeah. Let's gather around and hate women and complain about them. Like, I can't bring myself to make a lot of these videos that people feel so comfortable making. I, yeah. I, I'm i sure you see these videos all the time of like, here's another random chick saying some outlandishly crazy stuff. Some dumb that, shit yeah. because she's some 20 years stuff. old. So and it's she's also. Hot. It's also they do the thing in all fairness. They go, let's get a bunch of dumb club chicks and put them True. in a room and then put Which microphones again, and then start screaming at them for being dumb club chicks. <laughs> again, it's like you just said it. If you didn't say it that uh, obvious like that, a lot of people wouldn't realize just how redundant that is. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's it, and I can't bring myself to do that because it a wastes a lot of time. You waste a lot of energy doing that. And it's not a proactive way to go about solving the problem which is Absolutely. an understanding of yourself so that you can have the self-confidence and the belief 
to go and show that to a woman. Like, it's a lot easier. I, I was actually saying this on my live last night. A lot of people want me to do the, here's this A to Z technique you got to do. It's like, yeah, technique is cool, but yeah. it's even better and easier to execute on when you have the self-belief to go with. But you're not going to get there just sitting down talking about this bitch did this and this woman did that. Blah, blah, blah. It, it's, a, it's a waste of time. So just from your perspective, you guys have been doing this a lot longer than I have. What do you think is the best approach to get men to see things from that point of view so that they don't end up wasting their own time? So uh, first thing I think you have to understand is um, one of the reasons, because we, before I started doing consultations, you mm -hmm. could just hit me with an email and I would, you know, if I could help you, I guess my, that was genuinely my intention you did. was yeah, to help, that's just what was you to did. help yeah. people. Like, and Harry will tell you, I did that at the mcdonald's we did that at the right. you know, anywhere at the, anywhere anywhere if i could see a guy you if grab, i could see the stress on his face because his girl was giving him like, 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 don't come answer come 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 don't answer her wait here so i remember you so doing this that. is wait i mean here. this is great because i i can give you i mean you're giving you know you're giving me my kudos but this is also a situation where and let's let's do this let's let's you know let's let's start a friendship as well, I mean, a, a personal Absolutely. friendship. So, I would love that more than anything. Absolutely. So here's what, and maybe you can give me a little help with the, you know, navigating the geography because I, I, I kind of believe like more people heard about me from watching your video than they <laughs> do watching mine. So, the whole thing. So maybe we can help each other. But one this of the things that I think is important is you're, you're, what are you, twenty seven now? Twenty seven, yeah. Twenty seven. Okay, so. <laughs> This whole game of being able to pull tens and all that—that's all good. But there's what, mm. what what I'm really talking about as a 55 year old man mm. is yes. Yeah, so, so what? Like so, it's funny. I was on stage the other day and I was really because I, I, I you know I do comedy as well and and I've been doing stand up comedy for a long time and I yeah. And Harry, you'd love this man. I, I I I did a I did like an hour and twenty at the at the strip. I just kept going. They didn't oh, stop wow. me. And so I just started talking about, you know, principles of stuff, eating pussy, talking to girls, you know, mm -hmm. just everything. Right, right. And and um and now I'm trying to change those things into real bits. But what 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 happens is <laughs> you and I, you know, I said this on the last show, Will Smith, five hundred million dollars, right? Mm. Uh consummate professional getting ready to won an Oscar, and he was willing to risk it all. For so a woman. that mm. she would not be angry with him on the mm. way home on the limo. <laughs> so he and, didn't have to so hear about it. As yeah. we we talk about the the, you know, and 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 and, and I understand we there's a pursuit of money and success mm. and stuff through the process of this, but none of these dudes are happy. Like you know, uh, you talk about Jack that Sparrow. In, you, you talk about Michael B. Jordan. The, yeah, Michael that's my twin, the, the newest one. <laughs> The new one, Michael B. Jordan. God, that, that one hurt me to be honest. Wait, like what I said, happened that, with Michael B. Jordan? I didn't follow that. What was the what was his uh, thing? He was dating Steve Harvey's daughter, uh, right? Him, yeah. well, I don't know mm -hmm. all of it, but he was dating Steve Harvey's daughter. Uh, and Steve he Harvey's was, daughter. And he was um, on Instagram. Basically, and uh, uh, yeah, I actually I made a uh, couple videos about it. Jay it, Scott, but, I know you're probably more aware of it than than yeah. Harry. Right. Like, but, so <laughs> fill me in. <laughs> so, uh. Where do I start? Basically, it's just a, it's, it's that same thing we're talking about, a lack of self-belief. When yeah. I look at Michael B. Jordan, he looks to me like a guy that doesn't know that he's Michael B. Jordan. Yes. Does that make sense? It yeah. doesn't make sense for him on any level to need to date one woman to begin with. And right. if at all he has to, he can carry himself with a lot more confidence but he was subjugating to her and he was always deferring to her authority and pedestalizing this girl. And now he got this girl fooled into thinking that a guy like Michael B. Jordan, a once in a lifetime type of talent, is easily replaceable. You know what I mean? It's that thing where yeah. he's gotten her to the point where she's so comfortable. She thinks, oh, Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, that's an opportunity that I can afford to pass up on. Right. right. Now. Which is unfortunate. Right. It's the same thing with like I Will Smith. And, how did they end uh, up breaking game. up? Did they? I don't. I don't know the info oh, about how. Okay, they broke I didn't up. even mention that. Basically, yeah. uh, Michael, from what I heard, 
asked her to get more serious. Like, I think he like proposed to her, wanted to Ooh, get to the next you gotta be level. Me. You know, that trap, that whole thing of like, we need to get Where to the next going? level. What are we doing? Exactly. Like, first of all, he, he, I, I, I do you know like what my, girl. do you know what my take is on that? What is it? I'm very curious. Uh, okay. So I never asked, let's get serious. Right. Here's, here's the thing. Have you ever know? have you ever been with a woman who wants something who doesn't ask for it? I've right. never, never True. ever been with a mm. woman who they wanted to eventually something. ask. Yeah. She's gonna ask. So if mm. she didn't ask, it's because she don't want to. She don't want it, right? And, and no the reason why she's not asking because there's mm. no there's no there's no imperative to ask that there's no sense of urgency. Right. And so, mm -hmm. so here's something, and, I, and, I, and I'll give you this gem, is that a lot of times we, you know, when I first learned game and neurolinguistics programming and blah, 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 what all it is, mm. um, it was about, okay, this is what I'm going to do, and, and I'm going to get the result that I want. Right. Um, the problem with getting the result that you want is you don't get to see who the person really is. Um, right, because mm. you're you're driving them in different directions, and especially especially women who who ultimately deal with things on a on an emotional level, uh, they they have no idea that you're driving it. They have no idea it's just emotional. This is how I feel, and when I feel different, I react to it. I used to say, "Women's logic ain't logic at all. It's what she feels at the moment, and <laughs> that moment. changes. It, it's that changes moment as to moment." So if you're asking somebody that you're you, you're Michael B. Jordan, you're dating this girl, and they, you're a you're an item in in you know social media, in television, whatever, and you're literally you have to ask somebody where you as the guy you're asking, we need to get more serious. There's somebody who doesn't respect you, and she doesn't even see what your value is. So exactly. why ask that? Because when she wants it, look, I mean, I'm I'm. I'm, I'm Look, I was talking to an, uh, a, a girlfriend I had uh, maybe about 10 years ago. Mm. And she was like, look, I'm trying to get this dick. Like, <laughs> she's like, mm. like you talking to me. <laughs> you checking how like, my kid, how my kid is. Look, I'm, try yeah. I'm trying to get this dick. I remember when we was fucking, I remember, like, I, it was funny because, um, like, I've always been way ahead of the game because of what mm. my, my experience was. So I used to literally walk around with a with a medicine bag full of dildos and vibrators and <laughs> ankle wraps and rope and and this this was before you could get a, a oh, before you that's it, yeah, it was a, bag? the duffel it was the duffel yeah. a um, duffel a, and point. a fanny pack maybe yeah. 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 Dante had but one I of those, and uh, I also walked bandoliers also... of like dildos like uh, he looked like Schwarzenegger oh, yeah, like, predator <laughs> like like bullets. <laughs> <laughs> And and Dante his looked time like he was storming was... the Capitol. Anytime he goes, <laughs> damn, over there, house. I was gonna ins I was the insurrection of the pussy, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> but when, was and even I'll tell you what's even crazy. Like I had a I had a Hitachi. I know you're familiar with the Hitachi magic wand. Yep, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. So they didn't have a wire. They didn't have a wireless then, right? Oh, right. You so had you, to plug it, it in. You, Old school. You had to plug it in. Damn. So I also had a I had a a, a twenty foot extension cord. Um, I had, I had rope. I had a knife yeah. to cut rope. If I was oh. so, it was like, but you gotta you have the medical scissors. scissors. You gotta have the yeah. medical yeah. scissors in case of emergencies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You gotta have some real scissors to cover. Yeah, to cut to cut linen ropes, uh, one inch linen rope. And yeah. so it was like, um, so she she. It's funny as I was talking to her last night, and she was like, "Yeah, you used to come with your little bag of tricks." And I, she goes, she goes, you know, as I grew as I grew older, and her girlfriend was like, "Do you know about?" And she was like, "Yeah, that." He ruined me with that in 92. <laughs> so, but what's interesting is that, uh, you know, I, I forgot why I was saying this, but that, but the, oh, yeah. the point um, was when, when women want something from you, they're going to, they, when they want it, they're, they're, they're clear about gonna it. Ask. Yeah. They're going to, mm. they're going to ask. And if they're not asking, there's a, there's a, they don't want it. 
Yeah. Mm. And we're so, talking and about it, the it, Michael B. Jordan thing because he he wanted a serious relationship with her. <sighs> apparently, he wanted it to be more serious. Harry, your mic sounds a little it, crazy. What is it? Right what does now. it sound like? Hold on. Like Let a little see. rasp. Like how about does it sound oh. different to you, Jim? Is it cutting? No, out? it's on. actually he's got hot. to smooth this mic on here. Okay, on. all right, cool. it, How's it now? How's it? Okay, now? that's better. Better now. That's better. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, that's yeah. Sorry. Uh, I think B. he's cheating. He's got the best mic. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Don, I try. I try. Uh, <laughs> oh, we're talking about the Michael B. Jordan situation where you got. I love the analogy. Like he's a guy who doesn't realize that he's Michael B. Jordan. And he exactly. Was on, he was not only that. He was on Instagram. I mean, he was. For lack of a better term, wild oh out with God. the romance. I mean, mm. Valentine's yeah. Day, the hotel room, the rose petals, stuff where if he had done 50% of that, 30% of that, you know, he just went mm. all out. Goofy. And then, I mean, just Un goofy in love. And for what? Like, sure, Nothing. right? But what is exactly? It's not even it's not someone that he can do a lot better than that, <laughs> in my opinion. Well, he you know, really but the, the, the other thing is like it's because I got yeah, Harry will tell you, I do goofy, uh, yeah. elaborate shit, too. But, but 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 yeah, it's also but, at the risk of, yo, if you don't oh, you don't appreciate this, exactly. then you will get mm. I will you will be on the desert like you will exactly. get nothing, not even mm. a phone call. So I don't even have those. Those so, I guess your question. Repeat your question one more time, and let me let me back up a little bit. Um, Jason. we kind of started out with uh, how do you get? Well, we kind of we moved away from how do you that. Go from the neg how do you get? Because the stuff that sells is the negativity. As, yeah. Right. As okay. So, so how do you navigate that world without? So here's the thing. So what I was what, okay. Now I I got it. So what I was saying is that we this perception, Jace, of the people who making the money, who's really making that money, is yes. the happiness. But that's not the mm, happiness. It's not. Dog. That's not the happiness. What you so for me as look, I always want to make more money. I always want to be bigger. I want to do things, but I'm I've also just through being authentic and 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 being genuine, right? I right. also don't want for I'm not hungry. Like if I if there's something I want to buy today, I can go buy it. Now I don't, I'm not Chris Rock rich or Save Chappelle, but I, but mm. I can but. I never am going through a situation where I'm in love with somebody like, you know, like Harry used to say, Will Smith has an infinity pool. And the only reason why it's overflowing is because it's his tears. You know, yeah, <laughs> like exactly. he's crying. And he's he's <laughs> crying in his infinity pool overlooking the valley. Great yeah, view. Right. The world by himself, Great view. You can see the Hollywood sign. But you mm. so so. um as much as I believe there are certain things that you could like one of the reasons why the show has always been not, not that we won't give women advice, but you cannot fix a relationship from the women's perspective. Women no, are the can't. quickest to listen to advice. They will listen to Steve Harvey. They will listen to read the book. They will, you know, you don't get no pussy for three months. Mm. They will do and and that's really where the market is. I mean, all we got to look at is look at Sam, um, Kevin Samuels. When you look at Kevin right. Samuels, Kevin Samuels was abusive. I'm not saying he you wasn't. You think so? I, I'm not saying he wasn't correct. But right. what I'm saying is he was abusive in that. So here's a situation where you know the you know the format and the parameters of what Kevin Samuels how he sees value. Right? right. As well right. as, you know, what his his format is when he talks about a man of value. Right. To be we, honest, that's something I disagree with on, um, with him course, on by the way. Like, of course. But, he, he, he pretty much just defined a man of value as himself without saying his own name. Right. That is funny that you know? it all fit right. into his. Right. With yeah. none of the Literally. stuff that really makes yeah. a chick happy in the first place, because he was. And then so. But this is what's interesting. You didn't have dudes that worked at UPS calling up Kevin Samuels and going, mm. what do you think of me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or, right. oh, you saying is, the dude is, is this is a man of, of what, did, what was this, a man of value, a man of high value, man, a man of right. high value, man. Yeah. And a dude that worked at, at the, the parks Pinkos department or whatever. With, yeah. It, they weren't calling him. And so mm -hmm. that he could tell him they ain't shit. 
True. But you have women who were 40, 50, overweight, over, you know, not a size four, not a right. this, that, whatever. And they would come, they would call, they would call up constantly. We all know how this is going to turn out. Like mm. he's already decided. We all know what you perceive as value. You got to be mm. 20 years old. You got to be a size four to a size six. You got to mm. be agreeable. Um, have no uh, kids. Attract- no kids this now which is interesting because even Mm. when he got those women that called him up and said i am 20 years old i'm looking for a serious relationship Mm. i'm um i was in a relationship in college but then it became then he changed the move the goalpost but why didn't you marry that guy Right. Then when you go, well, it was physical abuse. Well, then it was like, well, how long was the physical abuse? He goes, how long were you with him? Three years. How 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 long was the physical abuse? Oh, mm. six months. Well, why didn't you leave in five months? Why didn't you live in three months? Like it, it you could never win. And so mm. he made money off of abuse. But okay, he, all right. He, I'm, I'm happy he, you explained that because now I know what you mean when you say abuse. Because no, if that's he how you define it, then 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 that is abusive. He also sure. didn't force them. Mm. They caught. They set up. They called in for the abuse. Now, this I know you're from Africa, but I mean, right. you, I mean, you you know what racism is, and and so in a mm. lot of cases, black people in general, because of white supremacy, and I know you've experienced it in Africa as well, maybe on a different level because of the fact that there were there were black people in charge in a lot of cases. Yeah. But the reality yeah. is that hurt people hurt people, and so when you have been abused, we know this about mm. children, children who have abused, True. abused their children, children who, people who are sexually continues. abused. Mm. It, it, it's a cyclical. And so he made money because it was abusive people calling in for abuse, whether they realize mm. that or not. And this is and and so he never nobody ever won. Like, it mm. didn't matter what the woman's personality was. You he always have to that. go into a negativity thing. He wasn't able to give positive advice or, or even if the person was on his side, he didn't know what to yeah. do with that. He could only even when he when yeah. he's when you, I've had young girls who in their 20s who said, hey, uh, I'm 20. Explain to me what it takes to be a good woman. Well, you ask your mother about that. I'm not going to tell you that you ask your mother. But why have you asked your father? So it's like you're full of shit. You know, like it's just your intention is not to help. And and so mm. what's unfortunate, that's he what was pays a smart the guy. He was a smart guy and his information he was, was very was sharp. Correct. Yeah. Like yeah. statistically, it was yeah. correct. The 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 logic of it was correct, but he couldn't deliver it without being angry. But it was also one. Upset. It was also one dimensional. Everything. A- a- absolutely. Was- yeah. And I'm going to tell you so much, he didn't have no game. He had no game at all. So Okay, I agree with that for sure. I don't think he had any game. And why do you you say that? I can always tell by the way a a man thinks how his interactions with women have been up to that point. For sure, he didn't have any game. If at all he was getting any female attention, it was probably after he made like his first, I don't know, million or something. I don't think... he was getting attention as soon as the internet started taking off and women, you know, he was this guy right. who, and him being this guy who was judging other women gave him, you know, women were like, oh, he's a, not only yeah. is he, a, he became a source it, of validation to him in right, a way. And right. He's the leader of a leader of men. I mean, mm. you know that, like, I know that leader, leader of men, men is always attractive to ones. women. Oh, yeah. yeah you, even mm. if you're a leader of women, but you're, if you're, if you're a leader of men, if men look to you for guidance, that's the women even will follow behind for sure. Anything that's will follow. And and mm. women validate your your existence to each other. True. So, so there's proof. been times when thing. I was real when I was really wilding out and I would roll up and I have to say I was rolling up with two mm. chicks, both of them sure, sitting yeah. on my lap and and other be, other women would be like, yo, how, mm. women would be like, well, uh, why who are they so guy? happy? Yeah. Who's I want to mm, I want a slice of that because. <laughs> Women validate that. So, but here's how. Here's the the how I knew he didn't have a game. There was a there was a moment when somebody called in. This chick, I think the chick from Black Ink or Love and Hip Hop. I don't know, a, a Sunny or somebody. I don't uh, know if you Love and Hip Hop. Which one was it? There was ah, a girl that called in, 
bad chick, big ass titties, fat ass, little, you know, weight which was snatched. But I forget the girl's name, but she came on and he was like, I like drug dealers. And I she what teach me. And like she was. But then he was like, no, I do want it. So he he was he broke her down and he was right. like, I, sure, I do want a good man. I do. Right. Like So he met her in L.A. I sent you that video, right? Harry? I remember seeing it. I forget who he was talking. See, there's two videos that you sent me. But one I remember was it, where he's talking to some Asian girl. He's like. And he's like, is that a hot Asian thing? Like, he's just like was very melted into yeah. the couch. It just was go, just, oh. that yeah, not that. And he, and it was he, one where he actually met this girl. He went out to L.A. and he met this girl. Yeah, they're right? making social. They're putting up videos and posting up videos. Right. And he's well. going, yeah. he's saying, just give him something to talk about. He's like showing off kind of and it kind of like broke black twitter and broke the black internet right because it was like oh she's mm. hooking up with him i think she was from black ink or something like that any in any event one of the reality shows but watching him interact with her like you could see she was ready to give him some pussy she was ready she was twirling okay. her hair playing in her head she was spinning mm. around <laughs> and you know she was kind of ghetto so she was like <laughs> okay yeah it's right? very obvious that way right <laughs> but he wouldn't even put his arm around her like he he kept a distance from her and i was as soon as i saw it i was like oh this dude you not even that guy like you mm. this is all front because it's if you if you know half of what you're talking about, you you know that you know when the chick is she was ready to fuck yeah. him immediately, and and she was giving off that flirtatious vibe where you could see that she was down, but he was like, uh, let's yes, yeah, turn, let's give him. He was just weird. Okay, and goofy. And, L- and let I me was ask like, you a question in there. Let me ask you a question in there. Do you think there's a possibility that he probably didn't find this woman attractive? Oh no, could no. that have been the case? No, no, because no? first of all, the chick that she was bad. She's a bad chick, but she's a right. and I've and you've seen him if you watch him with the with the pretty chicks, the big, you know what we. He talk. does act a little sheepish around them. That's He's, true. Yeah. So yeah. was it Tommy Lee? Tommy, Tommy Lee. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Tommy right. Lee. Yes. Huh. Yes. Okay. And he was acting like that around her. He he met her in L.A. They were outside of like an outside cafe restaurant. And he was like, just his like, you know what I'm talking about? It wasn't any of the delivery and the uh, the intensity that he has on his broadcast. That's for sure. I see. And and when I'm Uh, looking at a dude like I could Uh, I could tell you, you know uh, what I'm saying? You could tell. And I was like, oh, this dude's a cornball. Like (laughs) and I'm saying he didn't even have to be. He didn't have to be like he had already won her over. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like he had already he was already one time. All he one had time, to do was not mess it up. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. One time I, I was like, this was early on. Me and Harry first hooked up. And we was doing this. And yeah. Harry was trying to get this chick from high school. Was it a chick from high school? Maybe. Yeah. It, yeah, it was a chick from high one. school that was never like didn't really give him the rhythm. And she was texting and he was calling me up. And she, goes, she said this. And I was kind of setting the tone. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the girl came in to see Harry. She flew in to see Harry or whatever. And Good. I said, listen, when she hits your place, pin yeah. her against the wall, throw your tongue down and put like it's yeah. it's mm-hmm. a, because it's it, I mean, she's flying out to see him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. She didn't That's fly out. He, she came to see me. She didn't fly out. But I get what he was oh, saying. Okay. Yeah. What he was saying yeah, was yeah, there yeah. had been a lot of uh, flirtatious texting. And it had and been going on for a while. Kind of innuendo. A lot of sexual. tension, a lot of investment. Right. A little bit, of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then when, when, but this was, but it was, it was my on, vibe. Yeah. It wasn't Harry's vibe. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I knew oh. I was, I was setting it up like if I was going to hit it. He was giving me the advice on literally what to say. And like then, I was giving and him the I didn't, at the time. I just wasn't. You didn't pull I didn't through. Feel, I didn't yeah, pull through, and I didn't Damn have it, the, Harry. Yeah, I didn't. It's Damn a big it. regret. It's a big regret. But, <laughs> but you know, was, what can it, you do? But it was it's a so, learning lesson. It was. It was so, so years year, It was like he was still in his own context. Yeah. And then when I tried mm. to explain to him is the fact that I set it up for you to pin her against the wall and put your tongue down her throat, mm. and you didn't. Now she has to emotionally come up with a reason why that didn't happen. Now the right. reason the reason could be that you didn't find her attractive, mm. and or and she starts to feel insecure because she's expecting 
this there's this big buildup and then there's no there's no it fizzles out mm. right but then she's not gonna go uh she's not gonna say oh he didn't find me attractive she's, she's gonna, gonna blame say it on him gonna blame it on me right. yeah. He, yeah yeah right he's and the coward, so, not her. and then it's sure her enough fault. exactly what that's what happened it was like you you know we just yeah. don't have the chemistry yeah you oh, like you was ready yeah. to yeah. do it all right you was, it's all and yeah. it's all right jace i've made up for it believe me <laughs> I've, I've, excellent I've done, good to know good to well know and uh you know I, i've made up i've got a lot of championship banners it's fine excellent good to <laughs> I hear that, that opportunity i regret that. it but it was a learning lesson and i came back and, the and, next you, and you have to go through that to appreciate the opportunity that's the so only the next way time yeah. You see it, yeah 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 you have to go through all those things but yeah mm. that's so, one of those things so one of so one of the things about it, it just it was and it's funny because it's, it's harry and i go do this a lot of times the way you threw it at me. Well, maybe he just didn't. Nah, that way. Maybe mm. he just didn't find a re- Nah, that. Yeah, we I understand how that. to find the. Yeah, we try to find that a reason. Could be Is it possible? Something, but giving because you don't never make a. I don't ever make a decision on that based on one thing. I so, make a decision on the 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 whole body. It of, was also of the work. second time I know that I had seen him be kind of uh, squishy in front of girls. You know what I mean? I, like, I did was, notice him yeah. like tone himself down a lot with like, yeah. for instance, the, uh, Nicki Minaj interview. Yeah. A lot of people like to say he, he did that because he was trying to play nice. He was trying to go mainstream. And I guess there might have been some playing into that there. But at the same time, if a woman is clearly being defiant in front of you and you claim to be this guy that knows how to handle female defiance, but then yeah. anytime she's defiant, you're like, oh, <laughs> showing all your teeth yeah. like you're some little yeah. punk. Come on, man. And, you're and not we're also, what you we're talk, but we're also talking about authenticity. Mm, so if, yeah. if that ain't really what you think, then you got to you got to. The only thing that a woman ever respects is your is the truth and your credibility. True. So if you compromise that simply because of her status, then you, you might you forget, forget it. Like, mm. look, he, he, she didn't know anybody because, you know, Nick, Nicki Minaj is a handful, period. Just to her. Right. She reckless right. and ghetto. So you better, you, you better, better gotta wrangle come that higher day. than her. Mm. You got to come in harder mm. than her. So, you yeah. know, but it, it's, it's an interesting thing that, so, and, and this is a funny thing, something that I thought of, you know, fairly recently. It's like with the whole Me Too movement where, you know, you I'm, I know you probably get a lot of guys who want your want your advice and stuff, but they're like, well, with the Me Too movement, I don't do this and that, and I, yeah. I don't want to get in trouble. I can't do it. But the, but the reality is, is if you're, if you're authentic in what you're saying, then the Me Too movement is, it's not even a thing. It's not going to affect you. The way right. I say it is, I have a different way of saying it. I say, the Me Too movement is like a giant shit test that women created to to like sieve out the weak men, the inauthentic mm-hmm. men, the men that claim to be strong but really aren't. That's how I see well, it. Well, to a certain mm-hmm. extent. I mean, because we can't, you cannot, and this is maybe where my age, and you cannot mm-hmm. deny that in this country there was a period of time where women couldn't own property. Where, Absolutely. Where, Absolutely. Where it was it was okay to rape your wife like this. (laughs) And that's not, I don't know if we get canceled on YouTube for that, but I didn't do that. The constitution Constitution did that. And so the the me too movement was a necessary effect, but as any movement, what happens is the pendulum swings all the way left, swings all the way right. And then it still has to find some kind of middle ground, middle ground, a nuanced point. It never, it never changed. My technique never changed for me because I, because there was always an authentic and a righteous intent in what I was doing in the first place. Mm. And so when you teach technique, when you teach neurolinguistics programming and stuff like that, it's a politic that does work. The problem mm. is with the Me Too movement, what you have to watch out for is because there's an incongruence in because you're giving them technique that they could use real life technique that they could use to get laid. But there's a, there's a the terminology is buyer's remorse is the difference right. is she she sleeps with you. Right. And then you're mm. not really who you say you are. Now mm. she's angry because you sold her a car with no transmission, with, with a fucking transmission. 
And the difference is that with the Me Too movement, women have recourse. They can they ruin have a your way life. To, to act on that buyer's remorse that yeah. they feel. Very true. Right. And they have a they have a place where they can say, this guy did this to me. He misled me. He did this. Uh, this I felt awkward. He forced me. And so the, if you're going to play with that, with these techniques, and this is this is why I've also changed a lot of what I talk about is the authenticity is more important because to teach a guy like a lot of these pickup artists dudes if you get a chance google the, the pickup artists and 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 sexual assault just put it on youtube and there's all these guys who are teaching this stuff who are teaching this stuff and they're literally bagging girls up and bagging two at a time and they're in the room and then the girls are you know they're left and and literally raped in a sense you know if right, not right. directly because there's an incongruency and so so what this what the me too movement does also is it 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 really weeds out the authentic dudes as opposed to the dudes that are that are game that are gaming because i always said real game is no game so right true you you have to know the technique, but first and foremost, when you have the technique, you, 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 you need to be authentic about it. And most guys are not willing to say, Hey, listen, I don't know you. I don't even know if I like you. I mean, I'm going to fuck you. Mm. Um, but I don't, I'm not promise you nothing but that. Now, if, it, if you got more to give, I want more. If you got more to give, but I'm not right now. I don't even know if I like you like that. Mm. Well, do you like me enough to fuck it? Yeah. Like, oh, so you like me enough to fuck me, but you yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's how we are. And, yeah. <laughs> and when it's you that, say yeah, yeah. But, the, but what they're expecting, what they're expecting is you go for you to go, no, I mean, I I'm I'm not that no, <laughs> I, I don't know if you're this not is what it is. more than your this pussy. This is what it is. Yeah. This is how yeah. it is. This is what I want. Yeah. And yeah, and so okay. the authenticity so, of that is the difference. You for know. sure. That's that's why I call, I don't call myself a pickup artist. I call myself right. a pickup scientist because right. the, the 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 difference there is just like you said. There's a lot of guys in that space that have done a very good job at tarnishing what it means to be a pickup artist because right. they just went out there and they relied on just rudimentary technique without working on themselves first. Exactly. Because exactly. again, I, I, I was really going in on this last night on my live. I was like, listen, man, I don't care how much technique you have. Technique is great. Technique is cool. Technique is what separates mm. the gold medalist from the silver medalist, all that. But in order right. to even get on the podium, you need to have that congruence to who you are yeah. you need to be aligned in your thinking your your feelings your yeah. your body has to be aligned with everything you believe you know what i mean right and i think a, a, the biggest problem once guys get into my industry and my craft and all that is they just start to do things without having a belief system behind it yeah. you know yeah. if you just go out there and start doing random technique without understanding like on a deep level why you want to do that or how honest you are feeling in that moment right. and what, what, what's the point you're you're gonna end up freaking her out creeping her out and it's, it's just it's gonna end in everyone losing anyway yeah and yeah. it's uh you have to the other thing is what happens is a lot of these guys will learn these pickup techniques and it and they mm. can work and you can they end do up, yeah they, you can pick yeah. up a girl but now you have yeah. to maintain a meaningful relationship after that if you'd like exactly. to continue seeing them exactly. and that's a How about even better if you, if, if you pick her up under false pretense and then mm. she hits you with a rape charge because yeah. you misled her and now yeah. she has a recourse because you mm. pushed further than you or yeah. than you should have or right. you pick yeah. her up mm. under the false pretense of being somebody different and you, you better be that magician with that hat and that Man. goggles 24 hours a day that's bro. that's one that thing guy? i really hate it's like the pathological lying is crazy a lot of people think it's a good idea to go up to a girl in a club and be like, I'm a DJ. And they've never done DJ work in their life. That, yeah. oh my God, why would that you do not that? not good. <laughs> it makes, <laughs> okay, so what happens when she finds out you're not a DJ? You know yeah. what I mean? Okay, so the point then was, oh, you're, because this is their, their natural rebuttal would be, oh, I don't plan to see these girls pass tonight. It's just a one night stand. I'm like, okay, no, so you're selling the, yourself. Maybe you're the, lying. But ma how about the you're, police <laughs> officer? How about the police officer that shows up? You didn't plan on seeing her. Now she mm. shows up at your house with a police officer and says, 
oh, this guy did made me do shit that I didn't want to do. Like, exactly. Like that's, a sad, that's a sad Most existence, people, by the way. You're you you you're committing stolen valor on DJs. <laughs> on DJs, on the club promoters. I've heard these lies for years. Grown ass men talking about I'm a DJ, I'm a club promoter. What the hell are you doing? Why are you doing that? But the way I try to explain it is people have to understand every time you come in contact with a woman, whether we realize it or not, no matter how much we try to deny this, there's always going to be some consequence to it. It might not be something that will last a lifetime or whatever, but every interaction is sacred in its own right. You have to create that mindset. I think a lot of men need to create that mindset of like every girl has to be treated with respect to the degree that. If you have to meet her again later on in life, she will have amazing things to say about you. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Mm. I think people don't just don't value that or understand it like that. They really do see women as just, oh, I'm just going to uh, boink her, do what I got to do, and then bounce. I don't like that. I, I keep telling people the point of pickup, the original point, not what it got diluted into and what it got like you know changed into, the original point of pickup was to have a way to meet women consistently that's kind of what pickup was invented for there was a system and a science well, to it i'll even go around. i'll even go i'll even disagree with that a little bit it was right. where you had nice guys who mm. had who were had great qualities of good loyal dudes kind generous all these things but they didn't have the they didn't have the marketing to yeah. even put them in the realm of of women with because women For i sure. mean ultimately that's what women want is is honest nice, loyal guys, dudes right. i mean even if that's not even if they go for the bad boys but they're going for a bad boy hoping that once he gets with me them. he's loyal mm. and he's honest and generous <laughs> and all these other things but but the pickup was a way of kind of rescuing these nice guys who are and getting the short end of the stick value right Exactly. Really, that that's really. where it comes from. Let's um go to the Patreon. Um, plug whatever you want to plug, Jace, and then we'll we'll uh, do some. Oh yeah. Uh, just hit me up on TikTok. I, that's where I do most of my things. I'm on TikTok and on YouTube. Jace the Pickup Scientist. That's the name. Jace the Pickup Scientist. J A C E T H E, uh, P I C K U P, S C I E N T I S T. It's a long okay. name, but Jace you the could, Pickup Scientist. Google scientists for those of you who are really going to struggle <laughs> with that by the end. Oh, man. Just, if you struggle Jace with Jace the it. Pickup Scientist. If you struggle with that, uh, yeah. I apologize. I, I think that's what I stand or for. Or learn so how to spell. Because yeah. you can't pick up girls and, be, and can't spell scientists. Let's exactly. be honest. <laughs> Jace the Pickup Scientist. That's what I'm on. TikTok and YouTube. Show me love on there. Come check me out. I got a lot of good stuff on there to learn. Sure. Including the uh, great Pete Davidson video that, that he made Absolutely. about the it's show. Still, and it's what, still adding, like, I think a good 10,000 views every week on TikTok. So nice. for sure, go check that out. Yeah. yeah and you know what That's I like still, about it? You got you. You did your research and you got it right. A lot of these videos, yes. people just mm. kind of just kind of make them. They have their idea of it. And then there's like all this information. You're like, you got the information right, which I, I appreciate. The, only, the only thing no that I push, the only thing that I push back on, I wasn't trying to pass it on. Like he wasn't <laughs> the, he didn't get the legacy. He was, a, I, I, I understand that. You he know, was I one of many, to, one of many. I, I, I had to, I had to make the story a little, a little, I get you. I get you. I'm just saying it, it was, he was a dude who I, who did because he was a virgin when I'm when right, I met him. right, and I right. walked him through that, and there was things he used to call me regularly. But you know, it was it was you know the I the legacy from I'm I don't own this legacy. You feel mm. what I'm saying? The I knowledge guess, has I'm, to be passed forward. I'm yeah. trying to give it up. Like yeah. I'm a, I'm, <laughs> I'm like here, yeah, you know. Um, I'm quite sure you know this. Uh, knowledge is a burden, and so as you it learn is. things. Mm. It, it's a weight on you, and the only way you can relieve that pressure is by giving it Passing away. Yeah. And yeah. and once they get it, they go. So what you know, once they get it, then you're and then you know Harry is in a place right now where he's going. I need I, like I gotta like <laughs> I want to pass that knowledge. Forward. I gotta I give it all. Right, that right. So, yeah. yeah. Let so let me ask you honest, something real quick, Dante. Sure, uh, sure. Just again, this is gonna. This might be a bit of a personal question, but I'm very sure. curious, and I'm sure a lot of people want to know the answer to this. 
Is there any part of you at all that slightly regrets giving uh, Pete Davidson the skills that he has now? No, no. Why? Huh? Why would you? Why would you ask that? Because if there's one thing I know, right? Just from having mentors myself, I have had. I've been blessed to have men in my life that were personally mm -hmm. invested in my growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To, to not be able to turn around and give those men the kudos they deserve. You know what I mean? I don't think that's, in my opinion, the right way to go about it. And I, you're right. I mean, it's, you're right. It's not the right word. I mean, it's like, um, I don't even know if, if I don't even know if, if Pete would go, this was a dude who got me there. Um, really? But, I, I don't know. I, I can't really hmm. say. I don't know, Harry. What would you? Well, I mean, I think he what sure happened, hasn't. He hasn't reached back to me and no. So here's the thing that that happens in the world of show business, and as people get successful, show business in particular, people tend to forget a lot about. They move on to a different world, and they kind of cast the other world behind them. Most people do. Uh. It's not the best thing to do, but it, it's what ends up happening. It's not the way it should be, and so you know, for example, you don't know. What if you ask Pete, he might maybe he'd be like, oh, yeah, that did happen. He might forget. People forget sometimes yeah. what people have I, done. I for mean, them. How, what I don't are the think chances should, he forgets. But... What are the chances he forgets, in my opinion, what would be the most pivotal point in his life? Well, you that know what? Was an important part. of. I don't know if he dude. sees it that way. I, I think messed up, I think I think you see it that way because I do for sure. There's a certain there's a certain credibility that you're maintaining in your own life so that when you look in the mirror, mm. you like what you see. Like it's exactly like you got to understand you giving kudos to the people before you or the people that stood up for you. It's not just, yeah, it's great for the, for, for the, for the guy who helped you, but it's still, it, 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 it enhances you as a, as a man as well yeah. to take those things to take from people and not say thank you, to not reach back, only diminishes you as a man. Exactly. So, and you have so to care an, about that for yourself. Thing. Dante, we should talk about this over at Patreon All right, let's if we do can. Yeah, let me do uh, you, my plugs real quick. Gotcha. Uh, but uh, but uh, Jace, uh, Jace, the pickup scientist on TikTok, just follow his page. It's really great stuff. He's doing really good stuff over there. Uh, for me, all my social media at Harry Turjanian, including TikTok, which I'm posting more stuff on lately. And also, uh, speaking of passing on the wisdom, I am now uh, doing consultations thanks to Dante pushing me uh, so much. Finally, I'm doing it. If you want to reach out for a consultation for me, uh, email me at uh, advicefromharry at gmail.com. Advicefromharry at gmail.com to set up a consultation. Uh, you know, Google me, bitch. You know what it is. I'm here. <laughs> Everything you need to know, my oh, social media. Don't, don't forget the <laughs> consultations. TYBB gets the balls back. WW, uh, what, WWD, what would Dante do? The Sexual Revolution being podcasted. Yo, I love y'all, man. Check us out on the Patreon. We can ready to dig in real deep. Um, love y'all, man. We out.